In the name of the risen Christ, who gives us minds to think and hearts to love and hands to serve. Amen. What a great blessing it is to be back with you this morning, especially when the church is so full. Right? It seems like Easter. But it is still Easter, right? You all know that. You are the Christians, uh, the people who show up and know that Easter is, that we don't just come to church on Easter Day and Christmas Day. Right? The people that continue to follow the many weeks of what we call Easter Tide. And confirming young people and others is one of the great Easter events. It connects us to baptism. It connects us to that great glorious morning that you might remember just a few weeks back. And so it's my uh, great blessing and pleasure to be with you this morning. To the new fledgling church, and they were fledgling there in the beginning, Peter writes, Come to him, a living stone, and like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house. Came across a little story late, uh, recently, a little humorous story of three contractors who were visiting a tourist attraction together on the same day. And one was from New York, one was from Texas, and one was from Florida. And when they were finishing the tour, the guard asked them what they uh, did for a living, and they all said they were contractors. And the guard said, we just had this fence in the rear that collapsed, and maybe you could give us a quote, uh, look at it, give us a bid. So they all went back around the, the attraction there to the fence to check it out, and First up was the Texas contractor who took out his measuring tape and his pencil and measured and then say, well, I figure the job will run about $1,000, $400 for materials, $400 for my crew, and a couple hundred dollars profit for me. And next up uh, stood up the Florida contractor, and he also took out his measuring tape and his pencil and did a little uh, quick figuring. And he said, I could do it better than that. It looks like the job, I could do this for about 700 bucks, $300 for materials, $300 for my IQ, and $100 profit for me. Without so much as moving at all, the New York contractor said $2,700. And the guard, you know, said, what, $2,700? He said, how can you do that? You didn't even do any figuring at all. He said, well, it's real easy. It's going to be $1,000 for me, $1,000 for you, and we'll hire the guy from Florida. New Yorkers, right? <laughs> now, this is a little bit funny, and I tell it to you uh, because it's a good little construction story as we think about this construction narrative, but it's certainly not the kind of honest construction management that St. Peter is talking about or that we sing so beautifully of this morning, Christ has made the sure foundation. I like a lot of building. I do a lot of uh, small construction stuff around the house. We just finished a sort of big kitchen renovation. I didn't do that. Martha's thankful. Uh, but I just opened up a wall every time I even think about a project. Uh, she knows my schedule, and she uh, rolls her eyes, and she tries to talk me out of it uh, because she knows it'll go on for a long period of time. But I like all that goes into uh, construction. Maybe I'm a little bit of a, a frustrated architect or maybe even a frustrated builder. I like to watch the workers go through uh, the phases of construction. So when I hung out with all of our people doing the kitchen, I think they were just thinking I was supervising them way too much. I just sort of like learning about it. I like seeing what they're doing. Why are you putting that over there? Why are you doing that? How's that work? Get out of here. <laughs> Carpenters, bricklayers, roofers, electricians, plumbers, I like it all. Each person contributes to that whole project. Some not so much, you know, make mistakes and stuff and makes you frustrated. But everybody is putting their uh, work to it, and you see that sort of thing come up. There's a big building going up uh, near our neighborhood, and I go out there sometimes. And just sometimes I get out of my car. It's up on the electric road. They're building some kind of eye care center. And I like to just get out and look around, see how they're sort of laying the foundation. It seems like they've been building this thing for about five years. And so you just watch it sort of go up. It's an odd collection. Uh, um, the, the skin that they're putting on this building is... Uh, sort of every possible uh, fascia you could put on a building, right? There's, there's brick, there's stone, there's shingles. I don't know how it's going to come together, but I uh, wait with great curiosity. So, of course, I really value Peter's use of a building metaphor for us this morning. Peter's use of a house under construction is a strong one for the Christian community. It's a strong one for this day of confirmation because it calls for us to mature 
much as some of us don't want to do that, to, you know, grow up, to build up together with each other so that our common life as a community of faith might represent something unique to the world around us. And God knows we need something unique in the tumultuous world in which we find ourselves, right? What good is a Christian community if our behavior and the way that we are is not morally and ethically different from any marked way from the world around us? We have to do something that represents something more loving, more compassionate in the world. So during the readings of the Easter season, the many weeks of Easter time, we hear parallel accounts of the growth of the early church, how they did it, how they built themselves up. One storyline that we follow in the Acts of the Apostles is uh, stories of the risen Christ, of his appearances, and the accounts of those who encounter him. And the other storyline are about the developing is about the developing Christian community, heard in the continuous readings from the Acts of the Apostles and from the first letter of Peter that we read almost verse by verse through these weeks. The readings point out to us how we grow in faith and how we are to construct this Christian community. So this morning, Peter exhorts that developing faith community to consider itself a spiritual house, right? A spiritual house under construction. And he challenges the early Christian community and us, because we hear these lessons, the ongoing community, that is the body of Christ, that's who we are, to be living stones of this construction, living stones, right? Not just a bunch of static old cinder blocks lying over there doing nothing, right? But living stones, stones that are full of energy and willing to give life to the rest of the house, those who are, each of us has an active role in building the house up, right? It's not enough just to be a single brick, right? We don't go it alone. One brick is strength and it's, it's cemented to others. And as individual stones, we are connected to each other by the cornerstone, which is Jesus Christ. And without that strong focus on him as a cornerstone, just like the way a cornerstone works in construction, we will become a wobbly and maybe even dangerous tower. The body of Christ is developing anew in each successive generation of its mission. Right? We build up his body in our neighborhoods and in the world. Now, in this Easter season, we have to sometimes cast our mind back a little bit and think of the context of the early Christian community, because unlike the church that we know in our time, we remember that the early Christian community had no buildings, had no art, no sacred places, no coffee hour. Maybe they had coffee hour, but probably no coffee hour. They were a fledgling underground group. They were a cult even. So without the luxury of the kind of church facility that we often take for granted and enjoy in this period of the gospel mission, they had to build the church. They had to build the church out of the integrity of their lives, right, as individuals and as a community. With no physical stone worship place to call their own, Peter tells the early Christian church to be living stones, in the midst of a pagan culture, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house. So all of you are those stones, and you're the trustees of this physical worship space, and I uh, have 54 other worship spaces that we try to care for. They are physical stones, places where we form disciples. This is the sacred community of St. John's, and you are all each responsible for this place's um, existence in Roanoke to provide for proclaiming the gospel, transforming lives. That's your mission. But of course, this beautiful space would be useless, right, if we who inhabit it are not being living stones, opening ourselves to be built up into a spiritual house, a house under construction. Because without living stones built upon the cornerstone of the risen Christ, this place is just another lifeless structure, right? I've seen churches turned into apartment buildings and restaurants and all sorts of other things. They closed down. I not long ago saw a church, a picture of a church that was for sale 
And it said this church went out of business because it forgot its business. So without bricks and mortar, without roofing materials, lighting fixtures, plumbing, organs, candles, how do we build ourselves up and our brothers and sisters into a spiritual house? Well, we find the principles of our gospel discipleship in the blueprint of another construction metaphor that is the baptismal covenant, where we make promises, and we're going to do that together in just a few minutes, to break bread together, to love neighbors, to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ in word, which is sometimes hard for us Episcopalians. I was talking to the confirmands about uh, we're not usually uh, willing to go out and talk about Jesus, invite people to church. So let's pro proclaim the good news of Christ in word and example. We promise in the baptismal covenant to seek and serve others as we strive for justice and peace, as we strive to respect the dignity of every human being. These are the building materials. And this morning we confirm over 20 people, mostly young people, into this journey, this mission. They will all, all of you will begin this new chapter in your mission your spiritual journeys. And as these young people and some older people go about figuring out how they will continue to follow Jesus in their lives, we will pray for them. We will pray for God's help. And we will, in a moment, renew our baptismal covenant together. Now, immediately before that, I will ask you as a congregation, will you, who witness these vows, do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ. And you all will respond, we will, in a hearty voice, we will. Most of you will do that because it's written there, but um, that's the promise. And I would ask you this morning, what will you mean by that? What will you mean? Will you mean that you will work together to make this a beloved community that they and other young people will want to continue to be a part of? Will you seek to find new ways, stretching yourselves beyond maintenance, to forward the gospel mission of the church, building yourselves into a greater and a greater physical and spiritual house? Come to him, a living stone, and like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house. See, our gospel work as baptized disciples involves striving to cultivate a heart of gratitude and love for God's love for us. All the things we have. So we look around and we say, wow, we are incredibly blessed. Look at all these people here. Look at all these young people in a minute. Try to drink that in. That's the future of the church. And look at this beautiful place that we have. Think about your own lives, the ways that you are blessed and have gratitude for that. Because as we do this, we are able to grow in our compassion and love for other people. The more we can experience being loved by God and loved by our brothers and sisters in the community, the more we can extend that love, I hope. How we care for each other as members of Christ's body informs and shapes our ability to love each other and then to go out and love neighbors, even strangers. So that's how we become the living stones that build up the church. Whenever we choose not to strive to be living stones, to be just sort of lifeless center blocks, then we reject the one who is the cornerstone. So we choose to be living stones. The risen Christ calls on us, just as surely as he did the early Christian community, to be an alternative household. Peter tells those who gather to be the church, in Jesus' name, you are a chosen race, right? You're different. God's own people, he writes, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You are God's own people. Your task is to proclaim this great blessing, and it's quite a calling. So let us pray. The generations that come after us, including the one that is beginning with these young people, will say of us that we labored with joy to build St. John's and this diocese into a spiritual house of the risen Christ. Alleluia.
Christ is risen. Amen.